What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to this channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2024 Volkswagen Golf GTI, courtesy of Hanover Volkswagen in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So, I'm excited, you guys. This is going to be a fun one. Today, I am in the 2024 Golf GTI because there is one major announcement for the 2024 GTI. I'll give that to you guys in a little bit here, but Golf GTI name is a legend at this point. It's gonna be competing with the Honda Civic Si, the Hyundai Elantra N, and ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are a couple different trip levels for the 2024 Golf GTI. Got the S starting at 31,965, 380S manual for $32,685, SE for $36,915, 380SE manual, which is the one we are in today, starting at $37,485. You got the Autobahn for $40,505. Lastly, the 380 Autobahn manual starting at $40,825. But regardless of the trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Golf GTI is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 241 horsepower at 6,500. 100 RPM, 273 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1600 RPM. That power being sent to the front wheels through your choice of either a six-speed manual, which again is what we have today, or a seven-speed dual clutch with paddle shifters. But here's the big announcement for the 2024 year. I'm sorry to say, this is unfortunately the last year for the manual according to Volkswagen, which really sucks. Because quite honestly, I love this manual transmission. And the cool thing about Volkswagen Golf GCI is that it's always been known for kind of having this golf ball shape, more of a golf ball shape in the past, but now it's kind of just like golf ball indentations on the backside, but still, I love this manual transmission. It's so buttery smooth. I've been having a blast driving this thing. Like, it's so much fun to row through these gears, I'm just saying, but last year, for the manual for the Golf GTI, unfortunately. And that's what Volkswagen said, so don't hate on me for that. Anyway, zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 5.7 seconds. Top speed, 155 miles per hour, with MPG numbers coming in at 23 in the city, 32 on the highway for the manual, 24 city, 34 on the highway for the dual clutch, taking regular unleaded fuel. So that's kind of cool that it takes regular. But so now before we do any kind of fun acceleration here in the Golf GTI, I did want to mention to you guys the drive modes. So there's a little drive mode button kind of located in front of the shifter, but just underneath the infotainment screen. Those drive modes will include eco, comfort, sport, and custom, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, the steering sensitivity, the gauge colors pretty substantially, uh, the engine sound, and the climate control settings actually as well. So a ton of adjustments there with the drive modes, which is kind of cool. But anyways, now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Golf GTI here up to speed. All right, got it in that sport driving mode in three, two, one, go! <laughs> what the deuce, man? I love this car. I really do. This thing is an absolute blast to drive. A little bit of spinning there because, you know, we're sending a lot of power to the front wheels, but yeah. No torque steer though, no torque steer, I will say that. So a lot of times with this much power with front wheel drive vehicles, like I, I remember the Ford Focus ST back in the day, I just almost slid right off the road. But with this one, there wasn't any torque steer, so I really liked that, and again, the manual transmission in the Golf GTI is so dang good. Like, it feels so like a Honda. That's the perfect example. I've always said Hondas are the most buttery smooth manual transmissions to drive and the Golf GTI is right up there with them. Like this is so much fun. Just you don't even have to go fast. Just rowing through the gears in this thing. It's such a shame that Volkswagen is getting rid of the manual transmission, but I digress. To go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.4 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.2 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as that 60 easier stopping distance goes, that comes in at 120 feet. And just make sure there is nobody behind me real quick. Braking feels nice, actually. I don't mind that at all. So definitely no issues with the braking feel. It's not a soft braking feel. Um, it's not the firmest braking feel, but it's not bad. 
So I definitely don't have any issues there. But so then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, but you also get adaptive chassis control for the manual transmissions and for the Autobahn. So that's essentially your adaptive damping suspension and monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the rotor perfections, giving you a smoother ride, but also tightening up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling as well. So really giving you the best of both worlds. So that's one I always like to recommend because you can usually tell the difference, especially with the ride quality, at least if I could talk. But anywho, in my short little test drive here today, I will say the ride quality has been actually perfectly fine. And actually Hanover has some pretty bad roads, but I actually don't mind it in my short little test drive here today. I think the ride quality has been fine. Uh, as far as steering feel goes, um, let me wait for this car to move real quick. I love it. Dang, this is the heavy steering feel. It instantly points you with the direction that you want to go. Yeah, this is, this is a fun car, man. Like steering feel is wonderful in the Golf GTI. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going like no miles per hour right now. We're going 15 miles per hour. You do get a decent amount of engine sound, which if you're buying this car is probably a good thing. Like I wouldn't mind it. I love it actually. But other than that, it's perfectly fine. You get a little bit of road noise, but it's mainly just the engine sound, which I personally appreciate. Then touching our rear visibility in a vehicle the size of the Golf, you shouldn't have any issues there. I mean, you got the headrest there a little bit, but honestly, I definitely don't have any issues there. But in addition to that, rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard on the Golf GTI. So whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So just one less thing you gotta worry about there, kind of like automatic headlights. And the other cool thing is, only if you go with the Autobahn, you also get a head-up display. So that's gonna project your speed, speed limit, and safety features up onto your windshield, better helping you keep your eyes on the road so you can better focus more of your attention on actually enjoying the drive in this thing because it is a dang enjoyable drive. So anyway, it's a system with four visibility yet again. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Volkswagen Golf GTI. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2024 Volkswagen Golf GTI finished in Moonstone Gray. In case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one with us here today. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Golf GTI is made. Taking a look at the VIN. First character is the letter W, indicating that this one is built and assembled in Germany, as it should be for the Golf. But starting up front, of course, with the GTI specifically, you're going to get that red accent found through the front grille along with the red GTI badging to go along with that. Gonna get the black honeycomb mesh front grille down below. Also LED fog lights incorporated into that front grille. You guys can see those. I don't have them on right now, but you guys can see them to the corners there. They are integrated into that front grille on both sides. So that is pretty darn cool. I like how they integrated that design. But anyways, front mount intercooler hiding behind that uh, honeycomb mesh front grille as well. Got LED headlights to the sides with LED daytime running lights. Also automatic feature, but you also get automatic high beams only if you go with the Autobahn. So that's kind of interesting because I think even like the base Corolla gets automatic high beams these days. So kind of curious why they didn't put that on all trims, but only for the Autobahn, unfortunately. But Anywho, that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, gloss black window surrounds will come standard. You do get the Volkswagen lettering actually found in the side kind of panels here, the B panel, whatever you want to call it, right there. So that's kind of cool. I like seeing that. This is something different. Most manufacturers won't do that. But also, before we continue on, I did want to mention you got that GTI lettering found on the front fenders as well. So course that's pretty cool and specific to the GTI obviously. Taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they are heated you will get LED integrated turn signals but also you do get puddle lights as well so if it were to be nighttime out and uh, if it were to be raining let's say the side mirrors are going to project some LED lighting down to the ground so you're less likely to actually step in a puddle so thank you Volkswagen for that. <laughs> then take a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch alloys for the S and SE but you will get 19 inch alloys for the 380 80 trims like we have today or 
the Autobahn. So that's how that works. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. So now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, gloss black shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that rear window wiper. Got the GTI badging found just below that Volkswagen logo, of course. Also LED taillights do come standard across the board. So you gotta love that for a little added illumination at night there. But perhaps my favorite part in the back, you're gonna find dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. They look so dang good back there. Thank you Volkswagen for not hiding these. But anyways, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. And super now since we are around to the back of the Golf GTI, when it comes to opening that rear hatch, there is a button on the key fob to actually unlock it. However, it is a manual rear hatch and it's the coolest way in the world to go ahead and open this one up. You simply press in on the upper portion of that Volkswagen logo and kind of lift up. So it's kind of like a secret hidden passageway to open up the rear hatch, if you will. Stupid way of describing it, but so stinking cool. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 19.9 cubic feet. If that was not enough space there is a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down bumping then up to 34.5 cubic feet got some led cargo lighting back there you got grocery bag hooks back there there's actually a 12 volt power outlet i found back there got tie down anchors uh cargo cover as well then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you are going to find a spare tire plus a little bit of in-floor storage found under that cargo floor i guess you could say a little bit as well but the spare tire is there but then make your way up to the rear leg room that comes in at 35 inches even for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the second row get rear center armrest with cup holders rear ventilation back there as well little bit of storage to my surprise you actually get dual rear usb charging ports so you gotta love that uh heated rear seats do come standard on the autobahn trim level only but i think the big one here is rear ventilation doesn't always come standard in vehicles of this size so I don't know, I like that. But then making our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seats for the S and SE trim levels. And by the way, love these cloth seats just because of the pattern found in them. It ties together with the GTI lettering found in the upper portion of the seats. That's pretty cool. Leather seating for the Autobahn heated front seats do come standard for all trim levels. You gotta love that. By the way, these are one piece seats. So that's pretty darn cool as well. 12 way power adjustable driver seat for the Autobahn, power adjustable passenger seat for the Autobahn, ventilated front seats for the Autobahn. So. Uh, the Autobahn really gives you all the creature comforts or whatever you want to call it. But in my short little test drive here today, so dang comfortable. These are some of the most comfortable seats. I love them. Definitely hold you in place well, too, with the bolstering found on the sides here. So huge fan of the seats in the Golf GTI. But let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel real quick here. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped and it is heated for every single trim level across the board. You gotta love that. I like the GTI lettering found in the bottom portion. 10 and two grips are definitely on the thicker side of things. Not like BMW M Sport thick, but I love it. Steering wheel is done perfectly here. Then taking a look at the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key. Pretty heavy duty key, by the way, I like it. But Volkswagen logo on the one side, when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch or unlock the rear hatch, I should say. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the braking clutch and press that engine start button, which is silver and located just in front of the shifter. And so once started up, gauges are a 10 and a quarter inch color display and it is very adjustable. You can adjust the colors, by the way, by using the infotainment screen, which is kind of interesting, but you can also adjust the entire loadout by pressing the view button on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. It gives you a bunch of different looks, like there's kind of a classic look, as Mercedes-Benz often calls it. There's a navigation look, kind of like you would see in Audi, so I like that if you wanted a full navigation setup up there. There's a digital speedometer if you simply wanted that. I think my favorite, though, is the tachometer front and center with the GTI lettering, especially if you have the manual just because it is a manual you kind of want to know what that red line is and i'm sure the more you drive it the more you won't have to look you know what i'm saying but still that is a cool gauge cluster and again the colors are completely customizable of course it has everything you want up there it has the time of the day the outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty trip a trip a there's speed limit recognition as well and by the way we have apparently 445 miles until empty um i don't know if we have a full tank or not but that's pretty darn impressive either way but 
Now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. A power sunroof is gonna come on the SE and the Autobahn. I love that. Automatic climate control coming standard across the board. You got alloy foot pedals also coming standard across the board. I love that as well. Wireless phone charger, standard across the board. Ambient lighting, standard across the board. So a lot of this comes standard. I absolutely love that. Having said that, it is a little bit on the basic side of things. Now I will say I like the honeycomb mesh design found just above the passenger side glove box, also on the doors and surrounding the infotainment screen because that ties together with that honeycomb mesh design on the front end of the Golf GTI here. So I think that was a pretty cool touch. Uh, just in front of the shifter, you got a little bit of storage there. That's also where your wireless phone charger is located. Surrounding the shifter, you got a leather out shift boot, of course, but gloss black finishes. A lot of times in vehicles of this size, you'll find matte gray or matte black finishes. So the fact that they finish that in gloss black, I am a huge fan of. I find it super easy to clean. I got that in my own vehicle. So big fan of that. Just behind the shifter, you have a single cup holder, 12 volt power outlet, a little bit of storage there. And within the center arm, Rest. Gotta be honest, not a ton of storage in there, but that's to be expected in vehicle of this size. So uh, home light controls. Wow, I just found that. So you got home light controls on the bottom portion of that rear view mirror, which is frameless, by the way, with the compass in the upper right hand corner as well. So I love that. I love the home light controls. That's pretty darn cool. Overall, I actually don't mind the interior quality. There is some basic black plastic, but for the most part, Volkswagen did a really good job adding the detail, like that honeycomb mesh design, like the gloss black finishes, like the suede finishes on the doors. I didn't even mention that to you guys. That's really nice as well. So I actually don't have any issues with that. I think it turned out pretty darn good. I like this car so far, but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen here. You get an eight inch color touchscreen display, Bluetooth and audio streaming of course android auto apple carplay you can check out your ambient lighting colors up there as well a bunch of your vehicle information your climate control information so that's the thing with this car that's the one drawback i guess i would say personally is everything is done through this infotainment screen so the climate control information there's no buttons for that either that's all done through the infotainment screen essentially everything is done through the infotainment screen which I kind of like the minimalist approach, but I like the buttons better. That's just my personal opinion. But of course you can check out your radio information up there as well. So when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. Seven speakers does come standard, but there is an optional nine speaker Harman Kardon sound system. Believe it or not, we got that option. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. it's dang good i like that uh plenty of bass definitely plenty of clarity so there's absolutely nothing whatsoever wrong with that sound system so i'm a big fan of that anywho last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the golf gti in reverse and by the way to put the manual in reverse what you want to do is press down on the shifter and slide into the upper left hand corner when you do that you will get a rear view camera coming standard across the board not the highest definition rear view camera but it certainly gets the job done but that is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start, front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, high pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, forward collision warning, autonomous emergency braking, front and rear parking sensors. The fact that that comes standard is amazing because usually the front parking sensors are optional on the luxury automakers, so you got to love that. And then lane change assist as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thought, of the Golf GTI. It is such a shame to see the manual go because I'm not sure I would get this car in any other transmission than the manual because, you know, some manuals aren't that great. Some of them are a little bit notchy. This is not one of those manuals. This is one of those where it's an excellent first car to learn how to drive manual on. It's just so buttery smooth. It's so easy to find those grab points. It's such a nice transmission in the Golf GTI. Volkswagen did an amazing job there and it sucks that this is the last year quite honestly. I do love the digital gauges in the Golf GTI as well. They are so customizable. Volkswagen did an amazing job with that. A lot of manufacturers right now are putting out digital gauges but they're so not customizable. But the fact that you can press this view button completely change the look. The fact that you can completely change the color choices of the gauges as well is just absolutely amazing. They did a wonderful job with that. Uh, as far as interior quality goes, I, I actually like that. That's another plus for me, just because you get these suede inserts on the doors, you get the gloss black finishes, you get the honeycomb mesh design. I actually think Volkswagen did a pretty darn good job with that aluminum foot pedals as well. As far as room for improvement goes, really the only thing that I can possibly think of 
is uh, besides the manual going away, but you still got it for this year, so that's a good thing, is the ambient lighting. There is ambient lighting in this car, but it's so dull. Like what Volkswagen needs to do here is take a look at Mercedes-Benz or BMW, but really Mercedes-Benz is the benchmark for ambient lighting. It's so freakishly bright. It's so customizable. There's 64 different colors and it just looks absolutely phenomenal. So Volkswagen for the future, if you want to uh, kind of look at the benchmark for ambient lighting, look at Mercedes-Benz and try to replicate that if you can, because that would just make this car absolutely phenomenal as well. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Golf GTI in the comments section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay out.